To this week, Monday and Tuesday, we have Acoustai Engineering coming in to do the ceiling grids upstairs. Uh, one of the biggest things, thank you for those that showed up this weekend. We got some of the stuff moved from one side upstairs to the other. Amen. What I need to do is, while they're working on that side, is they, as soon as they finish a room, then we have to take stuff that's upstairs and move it over to the other side or out of their way. That's to help us to save on some labor costs instead of them moving materials that are upstairs. So if you're able to help, it'll be more like on Monday afternoon to Tuesday morning, because they'll get started on the one side and toward the afternoon we'll be able to start moving everything over. So if you are able to help out, uh, you can either show up or if you want to get with me after the service, you can get my cell phone number to contact me and that, that would be great. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, I want to thank God and praise God for everybody that's been helping with Robert um, last week. It's an exciting time. Soon there'll be ceiling, uh, ceiling upstairs. They'll finish up the sprinkler systems. They'll finish up the fire alarms. I mean, we are going downhill, and God is blessing us tremendously. Amen. 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 I mean, I, I I hope soon, maybe the next couple months, even. I know I'm getting on that limb, but in faith I say I hope we'll have 
uh, a prayed up start date. Amen. That's something we, we thought was a long way away, but it's getting closer. Amen? Amen. Now, I also want to mention Ms. Sharon needs help moving furniture, right? Tuesday. Um, some furniture, but more boxes. Okay, and that will be Tuesday afternoon after, after the Bible study. And I'm going to try and see if I can get over there. If you have Tuesday late morning, early afternoon available, and, and you've got some guns that you need to use um, to get some muscles, uh, we would like to get your help. Isn't that right, Ms. Sharon? That'd be awesome. All right. All right. So let, let me or Ms. Sharon know. I guess that's it. We're, we're living in some, um, you know, strange times doesn't really cut it, does it? Gary. Yeah. Y'all know Johnny Jumper out of the thrift yeah. store. Y'all know Johnny Jumper? Yeah. Uh, he's got stage four liver disease. Oh. And uh, he's, uh, I talked to him the other day. We uh, we laugh and we cried and we, we talk about everything. But he said, I will live until the future hope is opened up. Wow. Uh, stage four liver disease. Um, he just wants to live until the future hope gets opened up. Oh. Heart's really in what he does out there, and he, he said, I, "I miss, I miss being out there. I miss working and all that." So y'all keep him in his prayer, gave him prayer, so God will just comfort him, and, and, and God can heal him. Yes, God can heal him. Um, so we we just want to keep him in our prayers, please. I uh, I did not know that, and that just hit me. That was a blind side. Um, Sorry. I'm no, sorry. no, it was perfect timing because we need to pray, and um, Johnny. Um, Wow, just in such a short time has uh, touched my heart. When you walk out there, he's been volunteering nonstop for a year. Oh, he's there. He's there an hour before we open. He cleans the parking lot, checks the windows, <laughs> this and that. And he's, that's, that's his thing. He loves that place. Let's pray for John. Amen? Amen. Amen. And uh, let's, uh, let's get this thing open, but not because of that. Let's get it open and let's pray God heals him so he can see the fruit of it. Amen. Amen. All right, uh, we live in some strange times, some, some uncertain times. There's a lot of confusion. But how many of us are confident that God is on the throne? Amen. How many of you want to go be with him forever, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ? We may be very well in the latter days and the end times. Let's stand and sing with all of our heart to our Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Help us, Lord. Father, we come in the name of Jesus. We're praying that your Holy Spirit would take over this service. We pray for Johnny. And we're asking, Lord, that you'll just heal his body. Lord, he's serving you with all his heart out there. I thank you that this ministry extends to the northern part of the county. I pray, Jesus, that you'll heal his body. Yes. Lord, that you'll, you'll answer his prayers. And, and, Lord, we pray for our brother. We pray this morning, Jesus, for our church service. Lord, that you would be magnified and glorified in every way. Jesus, that you would help us to sing to you, that we listen to the words, that your Holy Spirit would just take over every aspect of the service, from the singing to the preaching. Give us great joy. We look forward to the day, Jesus, will be with you forevermore. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 Days of Elijah. You ready for us? Come on, church.
Praise God. Please be seated and gentlemen, please come this morning. Let's bow our heads and pray. Here we go. Father, we praise you this morning. Thank you, Father, for, uh, for your word, for being able to sing to you, praise us to you, for the assurance of our salvation, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, that you became sin for us, he that knew no sin. You died on the cross, you rose again the third day, and whoever calls on your name, we can be saved, we are saved. I thank you, Jesus, for every believer in the house. Lord, if there's someone here this morning that does not know you as Lord and Savior, I pray they would call on you today. We need your help, Holy Spirit. Please take over. Help us just to be filled. Fill us, Holy Spirit, to the overflow. Fill us with love and joy, compassion. Help us and teach us in your word, Lord. These have been difficult passages. I need your help today. Please help your servant. You're so good, Lord. We, we thank you for all the churches throughout the world that are sharing the gospel this morning. The body of Christ seems more defined these days. And Lord, we want to lean into you. We want to cling to you, cling to your word. You are the answer for this situation, these circumstances, this world. We pray that you bring an end to COVID-19. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would heal cancer. All illness, Jesus, we surrender and call out to the great physician. Ultimately, Lord, we put our trust in you. And that we're just passing through in this life, in this place. And we want to be used in a mighty way, Jesus. We want to fall in love with you. We want to be so in love with you. And we want to be used of you. We want to serve you, magnify you. May you increase and may we decrease. Lord, we, we give from our hearts to your kingdom. Seeking your wisdom today, in joy we give. Please bless these tithes and offerings. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children say, his name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. His name is wonderful. Jesus, my
Amen. You know, in the twinkling of an eye, you've heard that before? Praise God. Come on, church.
Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. Amen, amen. Let's pray and, uh, and head towards God's word. We are in Galatians, Galatians, excuse me, chapter four, working our way through. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we praise you today and thank you for your word. Thank you for being able to praise you. You've given us another day. Our hearts are beating. We're able to sing praises unto you. We give you praise. Lord Jesus, please fill us today with your Holy Spirit. And Lord, as we move through these verses, as your servant, the Apostle Paul, as he recorded, as he engaged with the church he loved with all of his heart, Lord, help us let this word, your word, this holy word, impact us. Help us to understand it, and even better, to understand it and live it. We need you today, Lord. I definitely need you. Please just take over every aspect. In Jesus' name we pray, and all God's children said, Amen. Amen. As I am is calling you back to grace. Sometimes uh, Jeff needs a good tug back to grace. Amen. Remembering the same grace that was offered me, I need to be uh, reeled back into grace. The unmerited favor of God. I need to receive that, and I need to extend that. Amen? Amen. Now, I was thinking today, I kind of changed gears like in the last five minutes on the opening introduction. And I think this will help if I get some of my military guys involved in this. So when I was in boot camp, um, they paid attention to if you were doing things right or not. Amen. Amen. According to uh, according to what they expected, and not what I expected. Right. This happened early on. Um, I got off the bus with a bunch of guys um, in San Diego, California. Was it South? Yeah, San Diego. And they marched us into a open building. It was dark outside, but it was light inside. Had us sit down Indian style. And they said, you've got, I think it was one minute, you've got one minute to memorize your social security number. <laughs> uh, they had my attention. Immediately. I pulled it off. That was the first test. So when you get in trouble, I think it, let's just go with Air Force. Air Force, stand up, Gary. The camera's right there, real loud. Tell everybody kind of the story of how they kept track of whether Gary Grimes, what were you when you first went in? E? An E-Zero. An E-Zero. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, tell, tell us how that went. Uh, when you get there, they, uh, uh, they give you these uh, 340 and one, I believe it is. You still remember the form? Yeah. It's better than I do. And uh, it was called something, something that had excellence on it. And you never got too many for good stuff. It was always there. If, if your gig line, if your belt didn't line up with your button line and your zipper, you know, that was one that they'd pull one on you. If you, if you just little things. They would just, if your pocket was unbuttoned, give me a 341. You had to pull that out of your pocket. You had, you had it folded just right. And you had your name and all that filled out on it when you gave it to them. And, They'd write you up. They'd write you up. Oh yeah. Was, and they called it in the Air Force. Uh, I think ours was a, a hit or a demerit. They, everybody knew what a three forty one was. Okay. That's, that's what we. What did they call the Army? You don't remember. You were, you never got in trouble, did you? Guys never got <laughs> Jack, did you get in trouble? Never. Never. We're in the church house, folks. <laughs> Bob, time or two, time two. I mean, it'd be something like. I was an E1. I mean, we, we got to at least start with a one here. <laughs> That's probably what I was too. Is there something wrong with your razor? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the point of all that is to say it was hard to get everything right all the time in boot camp, right? As with life, right? As with life. Aren't we thankful today for God's grace. Amen. Amen. God would be, ooh, imagine if you had to go to God's boot camp, which I think we might be in. 
if we had to go to God's boot camp and he expected you to be perfect all the time, how would that work out? Not good. Not good. Not good. Anybody been saved by grace? Anybody sinners in here that have confessed sins and been saved by the grace of Jesus Christ? Yeah. All right, so we come to, uh, God bless you, we come to, it's okay. We come to Galatians 4, there's grace. Galatians 4, we're picking up in verse 12 today. That's where we'll start. We've recently covered verses 1 through 11. Out of the orphanage, a rite of passage. If you are a born-again Christian here today, John 3, 3, you are an adopted son of God. Somebody say amen. 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 Last week we learned not to return to bondage of any kind. We are free in Christ. Amen? amen. Galatians 4, 12. We'll just read verse 12 to get us started out of reverence to God, and then we'll move on down. Please stand out of reverence to God, as I am. Please help me, Holy Spirit. Do you, have, do you have the confidence in your walk with Christ? Here's a better way of saying that. Do you, have, do you have the confidence in the Holy Spirit of God with your walk in Christ? Because in our own efforts, we don't have much confidence. Amen. But with the help, walking in the fruit of the Spirit, maybe you've been a Christian like Paul had been a while. Do you have the confidence led of the Holy Spirit to look somebody like a new Christian in the eye and say, follow me and do what I do? Let's read. As I am, verse 12. Brethren. I was very quiet with that question. Normally y'all are loud. <laughs> as I am, verse 12. Brethren, I beseech you, be as I am. Ultimately, we want to be as the I am, the great I am. But Amen. Paul, let's, let's stay with the context. Be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. Praise God for his word. Please be seated. Paul writes to them and said, basically, be like me. Be like me. Now, is he being arrogant or cocky there? Like, I got this thing figured out. Just, just hang with me. I got, I got this Christian thing down. Is that what he was? Is that, is a, is that what we're gathering? I don't think so. I don't, no, 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 no. Um, uh, continue. You got to continue by considering the whole chapter and what they've been talking about. Continuing with the previous context, Paul wanted them to leave legalism in context. Leave the legalism that the Judaizers were kind of sucking them into. And these were Gentile Christians getting sucked into a system that was putting them in bondage, right? So Paul wanted them to leave legalism and like him, live free in Christ. Now, we've covered this multiple times, but I think I need to insert this here. Is Paul saying then that gives us the freedom to sin and do whatever we want? The God words forbid. are, God forbid. The Holy Spirit, the word written on our hearts, you're born again. I think the Holy Spirit's very good. He is God of letting us know when we are out of God's will. Amen? Amen. 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 We're led of the Spirit, not by the flesh. But we need to be. Don't follow those in bondage is what he's saying. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, much of the same idea. Mark it down if you want to. Get your pens ready. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, it's really the same idea. And that Corinthian church had some things going on for sure. Be ye followers of me, he says, even as I also am of Christ. Now you could pull from that. If I stop following Christ, uh, then stop following me, right? Yeah. <laughs> so he's pointing to Christ. Paul tells the Galatians, for I am as you, we see here. I want you to mark down 1 Corinthians 9, chapter 9, verse 19 through 23. I'll pull something from verse 22, just a, just a statement. 1 Corinthians 9, 22, we find... I made all things, Paul says, I made all things to all men that I might be all, be all means, I'm sorry, that I might by all means save some. So since I butchered that, let's try it again. I have made all things to all men that I might by all means save some. You find in that context that when Paul was with the Jews, 
He wasn't, he was trying to see that folks were saved. So he could have, is the word, adapt, adapt to the situation or the circumstances. This is, this is one of those situations where he would go with the Gentiles and be witnessing to them. He was eventually called to the Gentiles and he could adapt to those situations without compromising the word of God, amen? And he would share the gospel. Because if you go into a room and things are different than you're used to, and you blow that room up and you want it to be your way, well, then you're gonna, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get an ear to share the gospel. Am I, am I making any sense? Yeah. So you'll find that there. So Paul's moving as Paul lovingly corrects their movement towards legalism. They're kind of going back and listening to the Judaizers in love. He tells them. You did not wrong me. You did not wrong me, he says to them. No. In fact, they had been kind to Paul. See Paul's pastoral heart here start to come out in his writing. They had been kind to Paul. Hard to be, hard to be as Paul, in Paul's words, what did he call himself? He called himself the chief, the chief of sinners. He probably remembered there's no problem about it. He remembered holding those coats while who was stoned? Yeah. He remembers his zeal to destroy the way, the Christians. He remembers what God had pulled him from. He remembers his upbringing and his legalist mindset. And he remembers all of his sins. And so it's hard to be in that mindset. It's hard to be the chief of sinners in his thoughts. And then he had to turn around and correct with God's word. That's key. With God's word, he had to correct the Galatians. When we have a good understanding of what God has saved us from, our sins and the struggles, frankly, that we still have every day. I have struggles every day. Anybody else in the house? I, I just do. I mean, I'm... I mean, I go to God's word. We pray together. That doesn't mean I get through a day. Well, I was, I was sinless today. Well, there's pride right there. Right? So I struggle to this day. And I've been a Christian a long time. So then when you know about your own sins, right? When we know about our own sins, our own, our own shortcomings, our own sins, our own, our own transgressions. And then God says, okay, okay, Gary, I want you to go teach God's word Sunday. It makes it hard because then we've got to, got, okay, let me make sure I got, I want to make sure I'm right with you, Jesus, before I open this up, right? Amen. Then you got, okay, Jeff Henry, I want you to go preach. Whew, Lord, I had, far as the east is from the west, Jeff Henry, go <laughs> preach. But Lord, as deep as the deepest ocean, Jeff Henry, what sin? I've forgiven you. Amen. You confessed it. Go preach. Amen. But Lord, I don't want to preach this part today. <laughs> I've never heard him say too bad, but I've kind of felt like that. <laughs> Are you getting where I'm coming from here? The Apostle Paul knows he's a sinner. Now he's called upon to correct them because they're falling back into legalism. Preachers and teachers, we can relate. Amen. If you've ever stood in this pulpit, I think a lot of men in here have, and you've taught over in the blue room or you've taught anywhere, preached anywhere, say amen if you can relate. Amen. One of the hard things Pastor Paul did was preach God's word of correction to those he loved and led to Jesus. It was, it was clearly hard to, when we see his, it's almost a groaning as he's coming through this chapter. I would, I personally would much rather preach happy sermons. 52 weeks a year. <laughs> happy, happy, happy. Yes. Can I read something? Yes. First uh, John 3 and 18. My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And hereby we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our heart condemns us, what you're talking about, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. 
Amen. I'm so glad he's greater than my heart. Amen. You? Amen. 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 Now we're moving here. We come to verse 13. As Christ Jesus. As Christ Jesus. You know how through infirmity, that means feebleness of body, or it could be emotional. Um, infirmity, feebleness of body, of the flesh, I preach the gospel unto you at the first. He's thinking back to his first encounter with, with the Galatians. One of the, one of the things I like most about the Apostle Paul um, is his stick to I don't know if that's a word. I've heard it before. His determination regarding, regarding the gospel and, and preaching the gospel no matter what. Say no matter what. No matter what. No matter what. He was going to preach the gospel no matter what. In his physical weakness, God made him finish it. Strong. God made him physically strong or spiritually, emotionally strong. There isn't much evidence of Paul being one like Peter that towed it. Was it 153 fish he towed it out of the water? He just pictured Peter. <sighs> Paul looks like he's just been beat up and hung up wet every day of his life, right? The way he's, what he went through. I and mean, that's kind of the picture you get. So let me say it again. He was going to preach the gospel no matter what. In his physical weakness, God made him strong. Strong. Let's look at Paul's, uh, Paul's thorn for just a minute, or at least the context of that. And we have time. Turn to 2 Corinthians 12, starting verse 8. We won't cover this all because if I start preaching this, we'll be here all day. 2 Corinthians 12, 8. Second, Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8, verse 8. For this thing, I besought the Lord, how many times? Three. We're talking about the thorn in the flesh. For this thing, I besought the Lord, how many times? Three times. Three times. Christ, that it might depart from me. When you, you ever get, you put your, your hand goes down a, an old wooden rail or something, and you drive a nice <laughs> splinter just up in there, and then you say, praise God, I've got a hand to drive a splinter into you. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> your first reaction is, well, your second reaction is, ah! And you want to get that out of there, right? Paul is obviously wanting rid of the thorn in the flesh. Amen? Amen. Now, there's a lot of guessing that goes on with this thorn, and... Maybe preachers and theologians and teachers have wasted many an hour trying to pinpoint what it was. But I think we missed the big picture point if we spent too much time on that. But I will take my guess today. And I might be wrong. I'll take a guess too. A lot of guessing as to um, Paul's thorn, verse 9. And he, the Lord, said unto me, my grace, I think this is the point. I heard Pat say yes. Now, I know it's true. Is that right, Pat? My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Pause right there. Would God allow a weakness in our lives to remain there so that we would be dependent on him so we could have the strength of God in us? Amen. Yes. It's not supposed to be perfect in this life. It's not supposed to be in streets of gold downhill headed to the Emerald City. Right? Is it that I get to the city right? It's not going to be. We're going to share in Christ's suffering. Whatever your thorn may be, he might take it away. He might heal the body. He might heal the emotional struggle. He might, he might, he might. And oftentimes he does, but he may leave one to keep us reaching out to him. Amen. Most gladly, Paul says, therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ might rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecution, in distress, for Christ's sake. For when, here it is, read it with me. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Paul preached 
through the thorn. He was all about finishing his race, completing the mission, staying the course, sharing the gospel, taking the hits, taking the beatings, taking the whips, taking the stones. And he preached and he preached and he preached all night. And the young man fell out the window and liked to die. I think he did die and Paul had a part in him coming back to life. I am way in another part of the Bible right now, but you know what I'm saying. I'm also laughing because because I was told by Maddie on our way in here today, Daddy, you must be a good preacher because I always hear you yelling. <laughs> She's back there, so I must be on fire right now. Kids. So my next question is, is we need to check on Bill because I'm about to talk about Bill. Is Bill okay? Is he in Louisiana? I don't know. I need to find out. But Bill struggles with his health. And the Lord will give him a song in the middle of the night. I've never seen anything like it. It's a miracle of Amen. God. And I, the first time, you got to understand, he and I go way back. And the first time he called me, I think I was working outside. He called me so many times I forget. And he'll start singing a song that the Lord just gave him. And then he would say, this is way back, he would say, I'd like to sing that Sunday morning. I'd say, you'd like to do what? God just gave it to you and you want to sing it Sunday morning? And, and of course I was green and I'm like, can we wait a week or two? <laughs> now it's like, you got a slot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. God is singing right to him. But the point is this. <gasps> you hear him when he looks like he's about to die. Uh -huh. He goes and gets breathing treatment. The guy has got a thorn, which we prayed that God would take away. But isn't it amazing? When he gets up here, what for him? And that smile comes on his face and he just bursts forward in song. That's a perfect example of what God can do through our weaknesses. So don't, don't get too down on your weakness. I got a bunch of them. Don't get too down on them because they're probably there for a reason. Amen? They are there for a reason. A lot of disabled ministers, God shows that Jesus is able and he gets the glory then, see? If every preacher and teacher and musician was so polished that it was all about the preacher, teacher, or the musician, then who gets the glory? The preacher, the teacher, or the musician, right? We want God to get the glory. And he, he does, he does, when, when he uses weak folks like us. What this temptation, uh, sorry, they received, they received the, the Galatians, Paul, I'm trying to get back on track here. They received Paul with his temptation, with his thorn. They received him. They sure did. Uh, they received him. They didn't despise or reject him. I think what's going on here, help me, Holy Spirit. Have you ever seen somebody that has an obvious physical situation going on? Being careful here. You can see that something's happened. Maybe a, maybe a burn victim. Maybe there's a, some type of struggle from birth or whatever it may be. But you can obviously see that there's something going on there. Right? I think with Paul, he knew... That when people looked at him, they noticed something about him. It didn't, it wasn't in the eyes of the world normal. But it, does the world have the final say on what normal is? Do we listen to them too much? So I think they received Paul in, in love, with open arms, in spite of his situation, his thorn. They received, received Paul as if. He were Christ himself. Verse 14. And my temptation which was in my flesh is ye despise not nor rejected, but receive me as an angel, a messenger that is of God, even as Christ Jesus. Verse 15. Where is then the blessedness he spoke of? For I bear ye record that if it had been possible, watch this, you would have plucked out your own 
Can you see where I'm going with this? Why I lean this way? And have given them to me. Seems to be a clear connection with thorn. I could be wrong. I'll find out heaven. But I really don't think I'll be too concerned about Paul's thorn in heaven. Because I'll be with Jesus. Amen. How about you? Amen. Paul records their kindness to him. Because of verse 15. The I analogy. Jeff Henry. My guess. Paul's thorn. And ailment in his eyes is what I believe it is. I could be wrong. And please, Gary, let's not go there after this. So. I agree with you. Please send all emails, by the way, to Gary on the thorn in the flesh. I don't know what Gary thinks. Honestly, I just, let's move on. Just as, that's just my guess. Also see Galatians 6, 11, I think helps support that. Not a hill to die on, amen? amen. The point is, Paul was made strong in his weakness. weakness. Right? You will be made strong in your same thing. Same thing. We can feel Paul's appreciation and love to the Galatians, his attempt to pull them out of the grasp of legalism, and that is what he's attempting to do. Um, out of the grasp of legalism, and he was not moved by malice. What does that mean? You're right. He wasn't angry at them. He wasn't. He was. He was. We learn in these passages and these verses that he was puzzled. He was confused, I guess, a little bit. Like, why are you going back to that to legalism? But he was not angry with them. He had no bad feelings toward them, and he's trying to convey this, though he's correcting them in their new direction. He's pulling them back to grace and letting them know, I don't hate you. I don't, what's going on here? So we come to verse 16 as an enemy, we see. As an enemy. Was Paul their enemy? Am I therefore become your enemy? Because I tell you the truth. Now every biblical preacher, preacher's question is this. Every biblical preacher's question, when we preach the Bible, get ready to go to 2 Timothy 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. Every biblical preacher's question, when we preach the biblical truth, as I've already mentioned, that we all biblical preachers struggle with ourselves. We're not honest if we say we don't. Every biblical preacher's question, when we preach the biblical truth, the Bible... That is God's correction, God's opinion. Don't we have a lot of opinions in this world today? If you're getting your biblical truth from Facebook, you might want to pray about that one. How about just the Bible? B-I-B-L-E. Yes, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God, the B-I-B-L-E. Jennifer, I was hoping for more harmony next time. Oh, you were there? Okay. All right, so God's correction. God's correction. Teachers, Sunday school teachers, Pat, Gary, Faye Dixie, Jeff Henry, street preachers, Travis, Bob will, well, Bob will be preaching here soon. Uh, 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 Robert Baker. I'm, I may miss some, but all the people in here that have, that have to share God's word, are there times you have to share the correcting parts of God's word? Yes. Yes. In fact, you're commanded to. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. It's God breathed. Amen. And is profitable. That seems like a good word. For doctrine, for reproof, that is text, testing or conviction, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Amen? Amen. So, repeat after me. Ready? Don't shoot the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger. Still quick enough, a little bit. I might be able to dodge a couple bullets. Don't shoot the messenger. The word of God convicts, 
creatures, as I've said, of our own sin. You've got to know hour after hour, each week going through, preparing for this moment. I'm like, oh, I'm messing up there. Help me, Holy Spirit. Please forgive me. Help my mind. I said, <laughs> I sat out on the porch last night and the sun had just gone down. And it was quiet. Everybody was napping or they went, they took a nap. You ever take a nap too too uh, too late in the day and then you gotta get up and go back to bed? Well they had taken a nap. Girls were up buzzing a little bit, but I sat there and I thought, Lord, if I don't move, you think I could not sin? But there's still that old mind, isn't there? It's, it's a battle for it. So when we're preparing teachers, preachers, evangelists, when you're preparing, we have to, God deals with our hearts before we ever get here. Amen? Amen. Verse 17, they zealously affect you. Who's they? The Judaizers. In context, they zealously affect you, but not well. They, the Judaizers, with zeal, the language here, they courted them. They coveted them. They desire the Galatians with warmth, but not good intent. So it was done with, with warmth. Come on over here and let us put these chains on you nicely. Come on, you'll like these handcuffs. Let's put them on. They'll be soft at first. No. No, God has set us free. Legalism often comes wrapped in a cloak of love. David Guzik, I thought that was powerful. Yea, they would exclude you. They wanted to shut them out. Ultimately, was their ultimate motivation, shut them out of a free life of grace. I said it last week, I'll say it again. Christianity is not supposed to be miserable. We were miserable before we got saved, amen? I'm not saying we'll never be sad or at the battle of grief or depression or these things, but Christ came whom the Son sets free is free indeed. He has taken, he became sin for us, hallelujah. He became sin for us. He died on the cross and he rose again. He did something we could never do. We need to embrace that. The Holy Spirit will keep us on the narrow road. He will convict us of sin, repent of the sin, 1 John 1, 9, confess the sin. He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then walk in freedom again. Get up out of the chair, Jeff Henry, and keep moving. Amen. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. And to, I just don't want to live in some heavy, oppressive, legalist religion. Who would want that? I want to walk with Jesus, my, my love, my Savior, my God. So backing up a little bit, that ye might, uh, let me back up even more. Back up, back up, back up, back. Verse 17, they zealously affect you. They covet you, but not well. Yea, they would exclude you. They wanted to shut them out of, of a free life of grace that ye might affect them, that ye might be, here's the language, that ye might be warm toward the Judaizers. What does the person bound up in legalism look for? The approval of men and women. That's the bottom line. That is, be zealous for them, zealous for certain rules, Legalism equals man-centered. Christianity, born-again Christianity equals Christ, a Christ-centered walk. Verse 18, we're bringing it home. But it is good to be zealous, zealously affected always in a good thing. And not only when I am present with you. You ever, <laughs> Christians, talking to Christians, you walk your faith. And then has anybody ever changed their behavior when you came in the room? <laughs> Zealously turn back to grace. Paul is teaching in love with passion. When tempted to be a legalist, don't go there. 
So I'm thinking as we bring this home, and I was thinking at the beginning about boot camp and how the expectations are high. It took a slacker 18-year-old out of Hillsdale, Michigan, shaved his head and said, now you need to keep all these rules or you've had it. What we would do when we got in trouble in boot camp, and I tell you, I was I had a healthy fear of God when I went in. I did pretty good. I had some hits, but there were some hits, there were some demerits you could get that got you what we called a marching party. I promise you, there was no marching going on. Amen. Amen. What would happen is at the end of the boot camp day, everybody else was getting ready to hit the rack. Hurry up and shave, hurry up and brush your teeth, get in the rack. At the end of that day, if you had if you had crossed the line, let's say you talked back to, to a high-ranking petty officer, marching party, automatic marching party, where you got so many demerits, automatic marching party. What that meant was you had a meeting that night. You didn't get to sleep. You had a meeting that night on the grinder. You would muster on the grinder with the Navy SEALs. And you would do PT, physical fitness training, all night. Then make morning muster and breakfast. I never had to go, praise God. Some of the brothers was like. <coughs> Here's the deal. No one can keep perfect, a perfect record. No one can go through life and not get a hit because we have all come short of the glory of God. Amen? Amen. And so now that you're saved, give God praise for becoming sin for you and walk in grace. Amen. That doesn't mean sin. You'll learn more than ever now. Because you won't, look, if, as a born again Christian, if you go to do those same sins in the former life, you're going to have such conviction from the Holy Spirit. You're not going to, you're going to feel that miserable feeling come back. Like, why am I going here? And that's when Paul, the Holy Spirit through Paul, is calling you back. Repent and get back on the narrow road. Amen? Amen. Walk in the grace of Jesus Christ and the freedom of Christ. Please stand. Please bow your head. If you are here this morning. And you know not Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm about to share the gospel. The Bible said in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If you've ever sinned, say, Amen. 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 You're agreeing. I'm agreeing. Let's do this. If you sinned in the past year, say amen. amen. If you sinned last week, say amen. Get tight now, isn't it? Amen. If you sinned yesterday, say amen. amen. And if you think you sinned this morning, say amen. 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 See, it's, it's, it's always a challenge in this flesh. Praise God. Praise God. For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of works, as any man should boast. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Rebirth, washing, and renewing of the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. You were given new life if you called out to Jesus. But let me back up. We're all clearly sinners. Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9 and 10, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, do you believe that? Amen. Then thou shalt be saved. For with the heart a man mankind believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made, finish it, unto salvation. Romans 10, 13, the Apostle Paul, one of the smartest guys ever, out of my league, but I'm so thankful that he broke it down for a guy like me. It says in Romans 10, 13, that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. 
Have you asked Jesus to be your Lord and Savior ever? If you have not, today is that day. Maybe you are a born-again Christian. Maybe the Holy Spirit touched your heart in some way that I have no idea about, and you need to pray at this altar. It's open. Maybe you need to ask for prayer with something going on. I would love to pray with you. Others can pray with you. We love you, Jesus. We praise you. It's your time. It's the time of invitation. Here we go. Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Let's make sure you